Hello everyone, Dark Scythe here. Today I thought it would be interesting to go more in depth into the entire story of how my political views formed, morphed, evolved, and changed over the years. If you've been a fan of mine for a while, you're already well aware of my current stances now. But how did I reach the controversial conclusions of anarchism, leftism, and feminism? When I began to start speaking up about these topics over a year ago, many people were understandably confused. I lost some viewers, I lost some friends, both online and in real life. I've seen a lot of videos of people sharing their stories on this topic, and I see a very recurring theme. First they began watching people like Chris Ray Gunn, Armored Skeptic, then they delve deeper into the rabbit hole with figures such as Sargon of Akkad, then Ben Shapiro, Stefan Molyneux, Lauren Southern, and sometimes all the way to Jared Taylor and Richard Spencer. Then they discovered YouTubers like ContraPoints and Destiny, and their perspectives on these topics uh, and issues changed completely. Well, my story is a bit more complicated than that. In fact, vastly more complicated. So I guess a little background on where I grew up is necessary. I grew up in a very small, conservative town. The population was about as big as my subscriber count is today. My family was, of course, conservative as well. They loved George Bush, and thought the idea of him being a warmonger imperialist was just a lie from the liberal media, and in reality he was just protecting our country from the terrorists. Even as a young child, I found their political views to be quite appalling. I didn't really understand much of it, but I honestly didn't see an issue with, say, if someone happens to be gay, what's wrong with that? It all just really confused me. So throughout my childhood, I kind of didn't really care about politics. I was more concerned about video games, comic books, etc. My family was also very religious. I was forced to go to church every Sunday and Wednesday, even if I would just rather sleep in or play video games. I found the things I was taught in church were rather appalling as well. The preacher would say things like Pokemon were evil. I just thought, what in the hell could be so evil about Pokemon? It all just didn't make any sense to me. As I went into my adolescence, I began to seriously question the legitimacy of Christian doctrine. If there's thousands upon thousands of religions in the world, how do I know I'm following the correct one? Everyone I knew claimed to have an experience with God, why didn't I? I tried and I tried to have a connection with God, but to no avail. I seriously began to question my belief in God, but even so much as vocalizing this would have been taboo, so I looked elsewhere for answers. The first place I thought of was, of course, YouTube. That's where I discovered the skeptic community. The Amazing Atheist, Mr. Repsion, Nate Talks to You, and so on. I could relate with their stories, and their arguments against creationism made so much sense to me. I finally felt validated. A feeling that I had been searching for for a very long time. I grew to trust these people. They seemed so knowledgeable about these topics of Christianity, creationism, evolution, and so on. I was no longer afraid to call myself an agnostic, and later on, an agnostic atheist, a belief that I still hold today as a matter of fact. However, around 2013 to 2014, a shift in content of the skeptic community began to take shape. After all, you can only say God isn't real in so many ways until it grows tiresome, right? So they moved on to a new topic. A specter that was haunting the entire internet. The specter of social justice warriors and feminism. I learned about how Anita Sarkeesian hates video games because they depict women showing cleavage, and how feminists want to shut down our freedoms of speeches. I learned how the left is no longer liberal. They're regressive. Since I grew to trust these people, I trusted their rhetoric and went along with it. After all, I heard the side of the religious right, whom they essentially destroyed, so I should trust their judgment on this one, right? Around this time, I considered myself left-leaning. I didn't like capitalism, I supported the LGBTQ community, etc. These core values didn't really change, however, my views on society to an extent did. I was all for social justice, but this PC culture stuff was just taking things too far. Why are people getting so, dare I say, triggered over simple things like jokes? Jokes are jokes, and aren't meant to be taken seriously. This idea led me to accumulate a very... Edgy sense of humor. Nothing was off limits. Racist jokes, sexist jokes, these were all just jokes. Never mind the people of color, women, trans people, and so on that suffer oppression in their daily lives. Just grow up and stop whining about it. I obviously deeply regret once having this shallow, uneducated, and apathetic point of view. I absolutely cringe at the person I became in this time period. And unfortunately, this behavior was completely fine according to my peers at the time, so that didn't help anything. 
Then Donald Trump happened. I saw him as such a joke and didn't think anyone would take him seriously. But these anti-SJW YouTubers that I enjoyed were for the most part apologetic towards him, if not full-on supported him. This didn't make any sense to me. Why would they support a buffoon who they would have been laughing at back in 2012? What was the change? And then I saw the rise of YouTubers like No Bullshit, who took this anti-SJW format and just started pointing to anything remotely diverse and cried SJW propaganda. It just started getting so ridiculous and I started to see right through the bullshit, pun intended, from just their own videos and words. Now this is the point in most videos like this where people say they started watching ContraPoints, Three Arrows, Destiny, got into Left Tube and their minds were changed. This is obviously always a great story to hear, however my awakening from this was happening while Left Tube was in its embryonic stages to say the least. At this time, I was watching an interview with Tom Morello, the guitar player of my favorite band of all time, Rage Against the Machine, who, if not for the lyrics of Zack De La Rocha, I would be a completely different person today. In this interview, he talked about Noam Chomsky, who would become my favorite author of all time. I watched his lectures, read his books, and discovered his arguments for anarchism. I was a big fan of punk rock and of course Rage Against the Machine, so I already knew a thing or two about anarchism. Seeing it explained in such a well-informed way made it seem like an idea that I can actually be viable to me. I began to read other anarchists like Emma Goldman, Murray Bookchin, and Peter Kropotkin. These writings really spoke to me, being a person who was born into a poor family and had been fucked by capitalism all my life. I began to reflect on my past and realize how much toxic masculinity and reinforced gender roles did deeply affect my life. It made me feel like for a very long time I had to just be a, an emotionless robot that couldn't express any sort of emotion whatsoever. I couldn't cry. I couldn't open up about depression. I had to just take it like a man. Then I saw things like Charlottesville and the rise of white supremacist terrorism. I saw how blatant misogynistic rhetoric was honestly just the norm and completely acceptable in our society. I reflected on a lot of past events as well as current events happening to not just myself, but people I knew very closely as well. I began to become much more passionate about what I believed in, so I shifted my content from just shitting on random people on forums and niche communities to politics. Many were unhappy with the change, but many more were happy with it. But most importantly, I'm happy with it. And that's really, at the end of the day, what matters. I see people in the chat of my live streams, people who DM me, and tell me how my videos contributed to them seeing through the bullshit of anti-SJW and reactionary ideas. And that reminds me why I do what I do, and why I decided to change my content in the first place. Because I wanted to make a difference in the world, albeit a very small one. Still a difference nonetheless, and that's really all that matters to me. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you for listening to my story. Although it was a little bit abridged, there are quite a few details that I could have gotten into, but I figured I should probably make it a shorter video. Maybe, maybe I'll have an extended cut of this someday, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for so much for your support. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with me as well.